back. It's Studio Set Stage. I'm your host, Cynthia Mallard. Hey, guys. And I'm Mark D. Hey there. I know you guys are like, wow, we get to see you guys now. Yes. So we are so happy, so happy about that. So um, this is our, what, like this, Mark Dean, this is like what, our first um, podcast? This is our first in, video slash in the, podcast. Yeah slash video podcast in the pandemic. Uh, yes. Like we always say, thank you so very much uh, to all of you who have been riding with us for like years now. Yes, thank you to everyone, all the studio set stages out there. Um, we love you guys um, and we appreciate all the feedback, all the positive responses that we've been getting. It's just been amazing. Uh, during uh, the pandemic, if you will, which is um, not the new normal, but it's the next normal. It is. Um, and uh, we just uh, feel so elated to be here. And um, I'm ready to get to it. I know, I know. So, like, guys, so uh, there has been so much that has been happening. Uh, yes. Obviously, um, we told you guys before, um, yeah, this is Studio Says Stage. Um, you know, it's yeah. all about going from a, a very small place, right? Us helping you go from a very small place to a very yes. large stage, no matter what you yes. do, right? Um, unfortunately, you know, we're all people. And so this pandemic is affecting all of us, no matter yes. what type of profession uh, that you're in. So I know Mark Dean and I, uh, we have been going through it and, you know, we want to yes. just let you know we're here. We are a black podcast. We are black people, right? Yes. Uh, we are affected. Uh, we are, right. Uh, we have been in the business. We continue to be in the business and yes. it's, it's our responsibility, uh, to, to just take on some responsibility about what's happening, what's going forward and to help, uh, others like us navigate through this pandemic. Yes, um, and you uh, hit the nail on the head, Cynthia. It's about navigating through this process and uh, about progress, progression, yeah. moving forward, um, like time. Um, time doesn't stand still. It doesn't move backwards. It keeps moving forward. And so uh, that's uh, definitely what this podcast is about um, on Studio Set Stage. We want to continue to move forward um, in a positive direction. And um, definitely, um, I just feel, again, elated to be here and to be um, pushing the needle forward, if you will. And uh, we all do what's doable. We do. And I think if we remain positive, um, this too shall pass. It will. Um, you know, people, you know, you know what? I'm, so, I'm yeah. so glad that you said that because, you know, a, a lot of people, like, don't believe in the power of positivity. Yo, I'm telling yeah. you. Like we were talking about yeah. this off air. We're always, you know, just yeah. talking around just different ideas um, when it comes to the show, guys. And mm -hmm. I mean, Mark Dean, for you just to say just the positive, that that's what it's all about because you've already got people uh, who are spewing negative, negative, oh, hate, yeah. hateful things from yeah. politics to religion to social arenas. Right. Yeah. So we just need more positivity in yes. our lives. Can I get an amen? Hey. <laughs> Amen. So, uh, yes. guys, um, so during this pandemic, uh, we are parents, of course, um, and uh, I think we received like just, 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 just talking to your friends, right, Mark Dean, um, yeah. and DMs and just, just conversations about okay, right. the new school year it's kicking off, and yes. um, just watching all of the social, watching the news. Um, yeah. Hearing how parents like ourselves, we're, we're fellow yeah. studio set stagers, and mm -hmm. people literally upset, lined yeah. up on opposite sides of, of, of the street on how to educate our children, right? Oh, yeah, most definitely. It is, um, it can be uh, just mind racking in terms of, you know, getting to your nerves, to your core, because, you know, as parents, um, and guardians, um, you know, we all are deeply concerned because we see how the pandemic has affected uh, just the way just life 
is to be lived. Well, a pandemic, it, everybody's it, at home. It's like we everybody's all, at home. Quarantine. Yeah. Like we're all everybody's at home. Everybody's at home. Exactly. Everybody is just being, I mean, all right, do I have, just wrapping your mind around that process. Not being able, uh, able to go anywhere uh, without yes, a mask. You know, yeah. it is, it is, it is tough. So even with that, and as a parent and guardian, you want to make sure that's paramount is the safety and well-being of, your, of children. your children. Of course. And, um, you know, with some of the um, news that I've been hearing, and I know um, others out there that's been listening have heard about, you know, okay, well, what do we do um, in terms of our kids returning back to school? You know what? Um, I'll be honest with you. I was yeah. the one who was actually texting friends. I know I'm not alone. I was texting mm -hmm. other people, you know, hey, yeah. what are you going to do? Are you going to allow your kid to do virtual? Or are you going to allow them to go back to school right. face to face? Virtual or, I mean, yeah. it was a big struggle. And, and you know, mm -hmm. a, a lot of my sorors, we even, we even talked back and forth. Um, right. And everyone's number one worry, like you said, was the health and the safety of their children. Oh, yeah, definitely. I mean, and not knowing. I mean, now that they're saying the second wave yeah. of the um, coronavirus is, is hitting, right now we're seeing the effects where um, cities have reopened and, and, and certain uh, venues, um, public facilities, restaurants, you know, have reopened. Um, and it's been, quote, unquote, business as usual. but in light of that, you know, because of the past holidays, you know, we just got past July 4th, you know, we had Memorial Day in summertime, you know, summer is when vacation, everybody wants to go and travel and hit the beach and uh, yeah. go to all of these uh, festivities, the yeah. music festivals and so forth. However, you know, with those that went back to life as we know me, as, as normal, the virus hit. Mm -hmm. and the pandemic isn't over. Right. It's not done. Um, as a matter of fact, we've seen spikes um, like crazy. You know, um, the number of um, victims that are now in hospitals and, and, and just the cases, the number of cases have doubled, tripled, quadrupled um, this second wave versus the first time it hit. In a nation, so, in every in yeah. every in a nation, in every yeah. every city, every state, every city is feeling it. I know that is feeling it. It's like you know, yeah. you know, we were talking about you know education, and right. um, <clears throat> you know, you had some, I, you know, you had some people who were who were fighting mad. Some parents who were yeah. like, you some know, some people don't want to wear masks. Well, this like, and, and yeah, and this is going to dis disproportionately affect us. You know. Yes. Black yes. people, you it know, uh, you know, we're you know. we're the ones. Okay, yeah. So we're the ones. You know, mom and daddy got to go to work, right? So we got to send our children to school, right? Yeah, face to face, right on the front yeah. line of the war, right? And they're going to be um, more likely to um, contract the disease, um, the illness, um, because I was just thinking um, last year in 2019 when they had the outbreak the flu outbreak right during flu season and it had an outbreak in um my son's school system and it um they had to shut the entire school system down of almost a week to two weeks just to deal with the flu outbreak yeah you know and it had everyone was sick so they were like no we're shutting we shut my son's preschool that was shut down just yeah. due to the flu outbreak. So, you know, when you're thinking about that's just the flu and that's a common, uh, that's a common illness that you deal with, you know, yeah, they have and, now, and now you have coronavirus, which is like now you have coronavirus. worse and right. it wipes people out. I'm right. You're hearing, you right. You're Some hearing people are asymptomatic. On right. You're hearing about people on ventilators. Yeah. Uh, you're hearing right. about people who go to the hospital who yes. are not making it back. So right. um, as a yeah. parent, I can understand um, not wanting to send my child, you know, uh, to school. But then on the other hand, you know, you got the virtual, right? Yeah, um, got the virtual. I, 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 one of my girlfriends was saying that, you know, I have a, a child who's going, we have a child who's going into kindergarten. 
And yeah. this is yeah. when, you know, the kinder, this is when they really start to develop their social skills, their togetherness, that type of thing. Yeah. And so virtual probably is not the ideal uh, situation uh, for him. But like right. so many other parents, it's like, we're like, that's the safest thing that we can do. So yeah, it is. Um, I know moving forward, yeah. guys, you all have heard that, you know, different counties, county by county. Right. Were, was, was, look were going to allow parents to choose between the virtual and the face-to-face. We all know right. now that there are so many different counties who have basically that first nine weeks or, or even the entire year have decided to do a hundred percent virtual just because of like yeah. the same Mark Dean, like the second wave is, is of the right. virus is hitting and right. uh, they woke up. Thank God. Yeah. And, and you know, well, you cannot ignore the news, the, the well, the real news, um, the stats, know, and what the statistics right. are showing, right. you know, um, it's 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 affecting, you know, places that were virtually, you know, oh, we wasn't really affected by the coronavirus. Places, um, you know, of course, New York, of course, which was like ground zero, uh, for it, but it is spread it into places now Midwest. You know, you have places like Oregon, you know, Arizona, um, of course, Texas. Right. And it is now, um, it's all over now. Yeah. It's all over. And with those um, places that you say, well, you know, um, we don't have that population. We don't have that size to really deal with that. Well, um, it's coming home. Mm. Um, it, and, and someone that you know, has been affected. I know we had clean friends, um, family um, that was affected. Um, I've lost um, lost a mentor um, to the coronavirus um, just a few months ago, and um, you know, so everyone is being affected. It's you know, serious. In some way, it's serious shape, form too. Or fashion. It's very serious. Um, it's serious. I mean, and, I, I, and I've heard, I've to, heard, and, I've heard it like over and over again. People are like. Oh, it's just, you know, this is propaganda and blah, blah, blah. And exactly. those people, you can continue to think that. But like you said, until it comes to your front door, which it will, as right. we're it day by day, that's when you'll change your tune, you know? Yeah. I, you know what? I, I was just thinking, like, what is the big thing about not wearing a mask? How is that infringing on your your first, your, your amendment, your, your personal? Like, what is, like, how is that? Why is that a problem? I still can't understand that part. Yeah. Well, Cynthia, I, I just tell you, based on that, it is, um, I think when you feel, and in terms of, and I'm not saying with all Americans, but some that have had a certain level of privilege. Right. Um, you know, where I will say in terms of America, you are, you do have those rights and privileges, but when it infringes upon the safety and well-being of others, um, I think you have to take into consideration uh, that's being American too, because you want to make sure that your beliefs in terms of that, if it's affecting the health and well-being of the masses, then that's where I have a problem mm. with that mm -hmm. and there's been some people that have been grossly misinformed mm -hmm. um they mm -hmm. feel that um some i've even heard <laughs> they, they believe that the virus affects this particular uh segment this particular ethnic group versus that mm -hmm. it's always now in terms of what i'm seeing with the pandemic it affects um it's just really erasing all the stereotypes and it's really showing the realities of the economic yeah. situation and how it affects those of a certain ethnic group. You yeah. know, yeah. Um, there's always been a disparity between um, African Americans and Caucasians in this country. There's always been a disparity across the board with economics, um, education, um, health. You name it. All, all of the, all of the, you name really it across important, the board. All the really important things that matter 
uh, in life, your economics, your health, uh, your social, the whole, the whole nine. <laughs> As you can see, <laughs> we're just like you. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> you know, we have the show and we have the show at home. <laughs> And, uh, you know, we have kids <laughs> who are walking in uh, to our podcast show. So uh, that's our son. His name is Legend. And uh, he's, he's now walking into screen. So just like you guys are working at home, uh, we are too. Um, normally we're in the studio, but like I said, we're here uh, at the house. So it is, <laughs> it is the funniest thing ever. So uh, My main man wanted to come on. Yeah. And uh, what we were talking about, we was discussing the fact with our kids. Yeah. You know, yeah. Um, and education and stuff. How old are you? So, so legend, legend. So let me, let me ask you, uh, you know, it, it's been a struggle. And, um, you know, what do you know about the coronavirus, legend? Um, what do you know about the coronavirus? I know people get sick without wearing masks. Wow. Really wow. get sick. Y'all, mm -hmm. he's five years old, and so he knows yeah. it, right? He understands that. So why is it that, that. we, we 50, you know, 50, 60-year-olds and 70-year-olds are like, uh, I'm, I'm yeah. going wherever I want to go without a mask. It's ridiculous, y'all. So. Exactly. So, Legend, let us finish the show, okay? Say bye-bye okay. to everybody. All right. Say, Say hello bye -bye. to everybody. All right. Okay. <laughs> Let's go finish the show, okay? <laughs> All right. Love you. Awesome. So, so, but yeah, so, I mean, Take it, it, it is the new normal is the next normal guys. And like I said, we just wanted to, um, pop in and just tell you guys, we're, you know, we're, we're all going through it the, the same way, just like you're having, you know, possibly lots of challenges. Uh, and yes. actually we're, we're having challenges also, uh, amidst, uh, the pandemic, but you have to know that we'll get through this, you know? Um, yes. Yeah. We will. Yeah, we will. Um, you know, you just have to um, stay abreast of the real information. Mm -hmm. uh, stay informed. Stay yeah. safe. Um, like you said, Cynthia, um, one of the best ways to um, stay safe from this pandemic is when you're out, wear your mask. Yeah. Um, wear your mask. Wash your hands. Um, and I was talking with a neighbor in, in our community earlier today and she was like you know I, I mean i don't see what's the big deal you know you should already know to wash your hands when you've been out you yeah. know but yeah because of, of certain things um and pre-pandemic we've been used to just going and going and going yeah not understanding that is some of the simplest things that can that you can do to prevent illness and and so um it's those things that you need to do you need to wear your mask you need to wash your hands um you know if you are uh, around people you know remember the social distancing yeah you know staying at least six feet no more um big parties you know right. uh they had a story a couple of weeks ago where people was at this um i guess this event and and they said about they said it was about maybe 1,500 to 2,000 people there. Right. And they said about 100 people, 100 people got affected. Got well, infected well think about the, also the, the, the I, I read the story about how one, a young person went out, went to a yeah. party without a mask, right? Right. He's fine. It's the, it was his family that got sick. They so got he sick. went to a party right. without the mask. He came back. And right. now, I, I, from what I understand, his father is fighting uh, for his life in the ICU, yeah. if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. So it yeah. may not affect you, but others, you know what I'm saying, who are around it's, you. That right. That means everything. So, um, yeah. you know, another thing we, we definitely, like, we wanted to, like, just touch upon um, mm -hmm which is really affecting us. And it's because of the pandemic, because of police brutality, because of the racism, just because of yes. all of that. Um, people, this freedom of speech, right? We right. all have the right to freedom of speech, right? Yes. But I just, you know, and, and it may just be me, Mark, but it seems like, seems like people's real feelings Mm -hmm. about black people, about white people, about all races. Like now is when people are just letting it fly. Yeah. It's not subtle. No. Um, I think um, 
just I, I think some of the the situation surrounding the pandemic, you know, being quarantined has um, created in some instances a powder keg of um, a multitude of feelings. Right. Um, dealing well, I don't with think it has that's... created it. I just think that it has uncovered yeah. it, really. Like we were saying, it's being revealed. Oh, yeah, it's being revealed. No yeah. doubt. It's also, um, people have know, always felt the, the way they felt. Being Right. Yeah, lifted off, and the reality of of what's been probably being as with so many distractions, um, the the clutter has been cleared to understanding the deep seated reality of racism um, in this country, the systematic mm -hmm. racism mm -hmm. um, that you know, um, Mr. Will Smith um, said a couple of weeks ago. He said, you know. Racism is not like it just pooped up and just mm -hmm. popped his, his, his head all of a sudden. You know, it's just now being recorded. Right. It's now being taped. Right. It's now being documented yeah. in a way that reaches the masses. Exactly. And exactly. Um, so, that, so, so people have always, yeah. always been racist. Always been racist. Yeah. It's just they come to uh, these corporate settings to where everyone works and they just keep it hidden. You know, yes. but when they go home, it's a whole other story. You know, oh, yeah. that's when Definitely. the actual feelings and the thoughts of, you know, of, of 500 years ago, they're still right. talking like that at the dining room table at their homes. Right. And, you know, and I think it's, um, like I said, lack of knowledge on, on all sides, you know, no real dialogue has taken place um regarding you know the realities of okay this country was built on a foundation of racism it it goes back to slavery the beginnings right. of right. this country all right, all um, right. especially and, for america exactly yeah. exactly yeah well you exactly. know what and and i i think i can't remember exactly who said it but um the comment was made that you know america will never It'll never be okay. It'll never uh, profit unless that is as, unless amends are made uh, for slavery. And I guess, and I, I can imagine that may be pretty hard for the people who right now who are like multimillionaires, whose businesses were built on the on the backs of slaves. Yeah, um, you know, and and the history um, there has been uh, a lot of things and a lot of entities that have fought um i mean vigorously to change that narrative but the reality of it it is what it is yeah um this country was was built in a lot of um companies corporations that have spawned some billionaires yeah um was built off of the system of slavery. Um, but that's a whole nother uh that's a whole nother show, y'all. That's a whole nother <laughs> on that. But exactly. you know, um fast forward to now 2020. How ironic um is 2020 and when you think about the euphorism or uh, you think about 2020, you think about um clear vision. Um to me, I think there's been in mysterious ways through the pandemic uh, is a clearer vision of the current state of America. Yeah. Um, which is dealing with, you know, the, uh, again, the systemic racism, yeah. you know, and we need it and we needed a pandemic or something as big as this, right. To, to just to stop people, to slow to it slow down, slow people down. Exactly. So slow they can down. actually see, uh, what has been happening to a people for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years. I mean, yeah. it's just real. It's yeah. just true. Because think about it. Think about if we didn't have the pandemic. Think about if we didn't have this whole coronavirus, all this stuff happening. Um, and then we had the incidences of all of these, uh, of our Black brothers and sisters' lives being taken. Nobody, nobody would have even paid attention like so many right. times before. The difference now is that you don't have you can't you don't have anything else that's taking your focus you don't you're not at work 
right? Right. You're not dropping the kids right. off at daycare. Uh, you know, right. the only the only thing that you can do is see exactly what's been happening to yeah. us. Yeah. You know, and um, it's it's um, some people say you know you have those pundits out there that, that believe that it's going to get worse before it gets better. Oh yeah. But any change, any major change, um, requires um a deal of struggle. Yeah, it does. Um, but in that, it's also understanding that there is strategy. Um, when you add strategy to the struggle, um, it creates um, you know, a move forward um to um a better situation in terms of relations, um better race relations, um, better um opportunities, um, just a better atmosphere environment that fosters, you know, um the positives and do away with the old antiquated um you know methods that really is detrimental to the legacy, the history of this country. Well, listen, um, I will say that we have to be our brother's keeper, right? So mm -hmm. we have to look out for each other, okay? Uh, like yeah. you said earlier, you know, you can try and sweep it up under the rug and say, oh, it's right. those people uh, that's dealing with that. If one day you'll wake up and it'll be on your front step. So you have to yeah. be uh, your brother and your sister's keeper. Um, mm -hmm. I was, you know... It just seems like every day, you know, there is something new uh, that's happened. You know, we had, you know, coronavirus, there's the pandemic, uh, you know, then you had police brutality, right. uh, the killing of innocent black and brown people, are, uh, you know, around yes. the world. Uh, then, you know, now, now, you know, we go into the education, it's created, a, you know, a split in the education system. Um, right. And and then now you have um, the the tug of war now. Uh, with people saying or claiming uh, that mm -hmm. certain comments are racist. You know, we were just, um, you know, this week we were just talking about uh, fellow studio set stager Nick Cannon, you know, of course, yeah, you know, he's one of, our, yeah. he's one of our big shining stars, uh, Nick Cannon, um, self made. I, I, I mean, super, yeah. super uh, brilliant brother who has created so many opportunities for himself. And others, right? Talking about the yeah. Waffle Now, Nickelodeon. I mean, I mean, come on. I yeah. can go on yeah. and on about Nick Cannon, but oh yeah, you know, exactly. just this week we know um, what has happened. You know, um, mm -hmm. yeah, it is really, um, you know, again, it it shows the more things change, the more they stay the same. No matter how far and, you go up the ladder. Yeah, in terms of the structure and understanding the um, nature of the beast, if you will, yeah. as it regards to entertainment um, and going back to uh, basically our, our main topic, talking about the freedom of speech, mm -hmm. um, you know, um, and how the information has been so skewed to the fact that, you know, just by taking a couple of tidbits of comment from an entire interview um, can be taken out of context. And um, I don't know if you heard the entire interview or watched it uh, as it pertains to the Nick Cannon situation, but um, there were, um, I saw not the entire, but I saw the majority of the interview. Right. Um, it was with um, uh, Professor Griff. Right. So um, music, music he, is your specialty. So, like, what? What? what yeah. was, I mean, what was the whole gist of it with Professor Griff? Um, my my take on it was that um, you know, the views and opinions um, was coming from a show, and I, and I, the interview took place on Cannon's class. That's a podcast, um, and in terms of that, um, it was a show that basically talked about these kind of topics and have always, you know, kind of talked about various topics, race relations, um, right. the history based on 
um, you yeah, know, but did, yeah, but didn't he character? But didn't he char- Didn't Nick Cannon? Didn't he characterize like the Jews as owning like all of the banks, all of the like what? Like wasn't that what the deal was? Yeah. Well, basically, he was. He was basically. They basically got into a uh, religion uh, yeah. based on um, the with the Jews and and it, to a in a nutshell. Um, Nick was saying, and Professor Griff was saying that, you know, um, the African Americans are initially the real Israelites. Right. Or the real Hebrews. Now, that went into um, oh, oh, another oh my God. Yeah. conversation and opened up another thing because, you know, with religion, you know, everyone has their history and, and with the Hebrews and the Israelites and exactly. Jewish, you know, and anyone that's familiar with the Bible you know, understands that that is a very sensitive, sensitive, super sensitive, uh, super, topic. super, supremely super sensitive, which led, which subject. led, which led yep. from what I understand, uh, Viacom to drop, uh, Nick Cannon saying that, uh, his comments were anti-Semitic. Yeah. Based on, they were saying that some of right. the comments, um, which, um, a Jewish blogger, um, right. I, I, I don't I don't really have his name, but it really stemmed from a blogger of Jewish descent right. that actually came across the interview and um, interpreted those comments to be um, smothered in anti-Semitism. Yeah. Um, yeah. Which, um, you know, after listening to it, you know, I really didn't see him actually being... Um, you know, just yeah, I didn't totally either. anti-Semitic or anything of that either. nature. I didn't see it, but yeah, but yeah. But you know, um, it was you know, like you said. I mean, sometimes you know, like you say, the road to hell was paved with good intentions. Yeah. Um, I think um, it was um, taken that way, mm-hmm. and um, now um, they're making uh, they're they're going they're to make an example. example. They're out making an example Cannon. out of Nick Cannon, right? So yeah. Based on that, um, uh, I I did see he issued um, a apology. formal apology. He did based on um, those comments from that particular interview, and um, well, I heard the comments yeah. say, I, and and so many people have said, you know, intentionally he was not intentionally, like you said, the road to you know hell is paid with good intentions. Right. Um, right. You can tell that he it, it was not something that he was sliding anyone for. And I mean, right. we all know Nick Cannon, right? We know Nick Cannon. We know his his spirit. We know I I, I have never met him personally, but I feel like yeah. he's a good dude. You know what I'm saying? Black or white, I feel like he's a great dude with his head yeah. on straight. And uh, like you said, he, he well, said he was speaking truth. Yeah. A lot of people say, yeah. hey, he was speaking yeah. truth. Yeah, yeah. The, you know, the truth. And I'm gonna tell you, I've always said this: truth doesn't come to the party to make friends. The wow. truth can be, um, it can be heart wrenching. Um, it can be um, unfriendly at times. Yeah. But um, it's not the what, it's the how to. Um, and uh, you know, all I can um, really say is definitely. I mean, you know, Nick. Um, we have you know a fellow studio set stager. You know, um, you definitely have my support. Um, I can't speak for everyone, but you know, I think uh, this too shall pass. It will. It and will. Um, I just think it comes back to having uh, proper dialogue um, in understanding um, race relations because honestly, um, it's not going to get better if we are just at each other's throats. Right. Um, we do have um, some sadistic, sick people out there. Right. Um, that have a skewed um, mindset as to, um, you know, being the freedoms and the rights that all Americans deserve should be only allocated to one segment. Um, The um, one thing I do see with the generation, and when I think about that, I think about, you know, my son and those it's just a generation ahead, um, especially with millennials, um, 
a lot of a lot of the tolerance is being for taking uh, this racial injustice. The tolerance is dwindling down. Oh yeah, I think. And I, I think it's as it's out the it's door down. at this moment. I think it's. I mean, you, you, I mean, you've seen like all of the burnings and and the protest, and you have the militia groups on both sides. Um, yeah, it's it's like forget it. You know, we've been right. nice, we've been right. cordial, we've turned the other cheek uh, for so many years. Now let's try something different and see if we can get a different result. That's what it comes yeah. down to. Yeah, and you know the um, and the thing about it is um, people get hurt. They do in that process they do. um in to the degree that some lives will be lost sacrifice uh, some sacrifice um however it takes um to have and i'm not saying just totally throw tolerance out of the window but i'm saying it needs to be a different understanding and perception of tolerance right um and understanding that okay um you know, this country, um, all men are created equal. Equal, with a capital E. Equal. Yeah. Um, and so that equality has to be placed across the board now. Across the board. So listen, guys. Across um, the board. We are always here. Just want to make sure you guys know that. Uh, this yeah. is Studio Set Stage Podcast. Uh, I'm Cynthia Mallard. I'm Mark Dean. And uh, like I said, we're here uh, for you. Definitely uh, follow us on all of our social platforms. Of course, it's Studio uh, Set Stage. Uh, you can yes. find me everywhere at Cynthia Mallon. Of course, Mark Dean also. But we need yeah. you right now, if you could, uh, if you're on t YouTube, you're viewing us on YouTube, uh, Facebook, whatever, uh, be sure to yes. follow us. Be sure to like us. Definitely comment, right? And please share, yes. share, 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 and definitely sus subscribe. Because I always say we need your subscriptions. Yes. Uh, to know that please. you're there, right? <laughs> yes, please subscribe. Um, you can listen to us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, uh, YouTube, as well as iHeartRadio. And remember, check out the website, studiosetstage.com. Um, also, IG, Facebook, like Cynthia said. Mm -hmm. And uh, be sure to follow us. Um, give us that feedback. We appreciate it. And we thank all of the people that's been supporting yeah. us and all of the listeners. Yeah. We really appreciate you. And you know what? I, I've said it before. Um, you know you know any like amazing studio set stagers uh, people who have going, like I said, going from a small stage uh, to just out there, like boom, yeah. studio set stage, right? Send us a link. Send us a link. Yeah. Um, uh, give us their info. We would love, love, love uh, to have them on the show. Yes. Yes. Reach out to us. Um, studio set stage at gmail.com. Reach out to us. Go online. Um, we love the feedback and we want to find out. We want to find out those studio set stages that's doing it. Yeah, it and I mean, just to kind of ease this pandemic, really. You yes. know, like we said before, when we open up the show, uh, it's all about positivity and just uplifting our fellow brothers and sisters. That's what, you know, studio set stage is, okay? We don't want you to get it twisted. Uh, there's right. so many different entertainment shows out here that are just spewing just hate and just the devil just tap dancing on top of their head. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> like dancing. Say. Just to just like, like doing running man, man. <laughs> like Sandman from the Apollo, right? Just tap yeah. dancing. The devil just tap dance on their shoulders or whatever. So right. <laughs> uh, we want to do it, do it a little. Uh, we want to do it a lot, uh, not a little, but a lot different. Yeah, okay? yeah. So listen, Tell me, get that you. dirt off the shoulders. Get the dirt off the shoulders. Yeah. Right. So listen, we right. love you guys. Um, yes. Wear your mask. Please uh, do. Stay tuned to all of. Uh, the officials, the health officials, and please follow, follow, follow what uh, they tell you to do. Keep your family yes. safe. Uh, we'll wear our masks. We'll try to keep our family safe and pray for yes. us also as we will be praying for you. Yes, be safe out there. Stay strong <laughs> and wash your hands and protect yourselves. All right. I'm Cynthia Mallard. I'm Mardine. And this is Studio Set Stage. We'll see you guys next week. Say bye, legend. Bye. <laughs>